Hot D episode 5, Regent. This is going to be the quickest quickie of all of them. Shut up, I'm trying to make an Aaron video. So I thought this was a pretty good transition episode. The calm after the storm. An aftermath to the Dance of the Dragons over Rook's Rest, while also sowing seeds for future episodes. Perhaps this is the slowest episode so far. It didn't boast the highs of episodes 2 and 4, but also didn't suffer the low points of episodes 1 and 3. Sorry, I meant grr, give me more battles, give me more dragons, talking is boring, grr. Honestly, I think I have a reframe for this season. If this entire show is going to be four seasons, then I think season 1 acted as a prologue and season 2 is act 1. It's the build-up, the road to battle, the Cold War turning hot. I think people entered this season expecting Act 2, uh, but they're getting Act 1, so I think, uh, does that make sense? Probably not. Bring back D&D. So everything in King's Landing was great, as usual. The Greens continue to have the strongest scenes. The small council rightfully rejecting Alicent as regent. Aemond grabbing onto the steering wheel with villainous zest. Kristen stroking his sword with a fucking lemon. That was a painful sentence. Alicent is losing all the power she's accumulated through other men. Kristen doesn't consider her capable of ruling over such a brutal period. Laris has abandoned her for his own unknown reasons. And her pliable son is wounded. With genuinely deep burns, I'm glad it's it's not like a cute Tyrion scar situation. Aemond is finally embracing the villain role, look at him. What's Kristen gonna do, rat him out? Blame him for Aegon? Vagar is literally the only thing keeping the Greens afloat while they wait for armies to muster. Oh, and before we move on, has Brian Fondle actually watched episode 9? Like, I'm beginning to think there's some kind of deep, mysterious conspiracy to shield him from the dragon pit scene. Like, holy shit, why would you say Maelie's is beloved? What? Over to Team Black. This might be the most interesting Rhaenyra has been all season. She's lamenting that she was not raised in martial matters despite being named the heir. While she's right that the men of the council have not seen battle either, they have been trained for it. Uh, it's a reality the Queen is not comfortable with, and so later on we catch her reading up on the ruthless Queen Visenya. Is she gonna serve as an inspiration for Rhaenyra's future actions? That's kind of scary. Jace and Baylor were the MVPs of the episode. Jace securing the Frey Alliance by himself and initiating the search for potential dragon riders was lots of fun. He's proactive and super likeable this season. He keeps doing the Daemon sword pose. Of course the Freys want Harren Hall. God damn it. If this is meant to be Sabah the Frey, are they gonna keep her role as an armor-clad warrior woman who joins battle? Is she still gonna be Black Alley's lover if Ali does appear? She's clearly been cast older than she's presented in Fire and Blood, so I'm not 100% certain. As for Baylor, I thought her best moment was persuading Corlys to accept the handship. She gave the best line of the episode, that she is fire and blood and Driftmark needs to pass to sea and salt. Our man Steve also gave a great performance this episode. Quick shout out to the Vale. The eerie redesign is way better than the Game of Thrones version, but still looks kind of bad because they have to stick to the spirit of that original cursed design. Jane Aaron's pretty badass. I love her blue dress with the falcon. Blue. But this scene just makes me wish we'd had Jace negotiating with her. Why did they skip it? He's barely done anything until this episode. Did we really need to skip his Vale negotiations? I suspect those scenes are probably going to be given to Raina now. I hope we meet Jessamine Red fort and perhaps even Gerald Royce again. No way the Royces are going to be happy with Lady Jane supporting Daemon Targaryen's wife. Harren Hall seems to be the most controversial aspect of this episode. I'm honestly fine with the pacing and I'm fine with Daemon continuing to experience visions. It's clear this arc is not over and that's fine for me. As long as his visions continue to be trippy and creative and explore various aspects of his psyche, keep going. Just don't start repeating ideas and treading water. At first I was slightly confused about the Brackens bending the knee, but I think it's because the Blackwoods took mass hostages, right? Also, it's kind of strange that the River Lords would be so mad about standard medieval warfare, but I guess the Blackwoods defiling sects would actually be a big deal to them. And yeah, it's cool to see the River Lords. This guy is a Chad, look at him. That's a lord right there. Some people seem annoyed that Damon is facing friction and not just sailing to victory, but that's what makes his arc fun. I don't want to see him blindly succeed at raising an army. He's facing psychological and political challenges all season, and we want to see him overcome them. For this transition episode, I'm thinking a solid 8 zesty lemons out of 10 zesty princes. If you want to see more quickies and animated lore, feel free to like and subscribe. We've also got a Patreon full of exclusive content, and a merch store. I mean, look at this mug. To watch The Real Rainis, check out this video. Special thanks to my patrons, in particular, Alex, Andre, Caden, Coleshot, Dev Cole, Loopsy, Morphe, and <clears throat> Tovi of House Blackfire, King of the Andals, the Roinar and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of the Realm. See you later.